Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and right now there is a bangingly good bundle going on over on Humble Bundle, the Best of Polygon Game Dev Assets by Cinti Bundle, and when I covered it earlier this week, I told you I would do a more in-depth video, and that is exactly what we are going to do. So if you're looking for some low polygon assets to use in your game engine, this bundle could be a good pickup. And today we're going to show you using it in Unity, Unreal, Godot, and even Blender. So uh, we're going to look at about half of the assets in this bundle, but most of the major packs. And without further ado, let us go ahead and jump in, and we will show you with Unity. So this one here is the Nature Pack. Uh, and again, this is a very consistent flat shaded art style. Uh, I've always loved Cinti's style, to be honest. It's just nice. Uh, and when you're dealing with the um, Unity game engine, everything is set up and ready to go as prefab. So if you want to add something new into the world, it is literally a matter of finding the prefab of the thing you want to add and adding it. So it's just configured, ready to go, uh, and just a pleasure to work with in that regard. So that is the Polygon Nature Pack. We also, again, here have the War Pack. So this is for a war-torn environment. Um, you can see here there's like the skeleton of a airship or a Zeppelin that has crashed. Uh, over here we have a crashed plane, uh, the, the remains of a, what was it, AFV-2 or AFV-7, anyways, a German tank. Um, Oddly enough, here is a German tank with a British flag on the side of it. Not really sure I get that one, but um, so it's for a World War One battlefield style. We've got all the trenches environments going on as well. Uh, pretty nice pack again. Uh, again, obviously, you can mix these patches, packs together too. So, for example, if I wanted to bring something in from the nature pack, uh, such as, again, another rock, Obviously, they work between, and there's a very consistent art style between all these packs, so you can quite easily mix and match between them. The next one we're going to show you is literally just uh, assets. This is the hearse prefab. Uh, it's straightforward. It's a hearse. Also, there is a coffin. So a very small pack in that regard, but definitely still quite useful. Uh, what Do we have any more major packs to go? Yeah, we gang warfare pack. So this is for kind of an urban environment. Uh, semi-dystopian uh, future kind of let's go ahead here all right looks like nothing here we go so this is an urban environment all of the stuff that you see here to create it so things like we got some forklifts we got some cars uh, we got some uh, happy people that are having a great day obviously uh, throwing knives cigarette butts some cash uh, and so on and so forth. So everything you need to create an environment like this is included. Again, a completely consistent. Um, okay, there's a <laughs> there's a small samurai. All right, cool. Uh, everything needed to create this environment obviously is all set up in prefabs easily as well, so you can switch between them. Uh, and then we've got uh, let's see, we've got the zombies. Yeah, so that's the last one we're going to show. We also have some character models here in the zombie pack, uh, and there is a demo scene for it right here. Let's go check out one of the zombies. So it's a collection of zombies in a low polygon style. One of the nice things about Cinti is if you need to add and fill in the blanks, uh, they have so many packs of things that you can work with uh, that are out and available. Now, you'll notice these guys are all T-posed. They're set up for Mechanum animations, but they're not actually animated right now. So you see this guy, he's got no character controller. But if you've got any Mechanum animation packs, such as the Everyday Motion pack I pulled in over here, uh, we can easily pull in uh, uh, animations and apply them. I'll show you how easy it is to do. So we're going to bring in a dance animation, apply it right here, and let's check that out. Oh, so I should have done uh, apply root motion turned off. I always forget to toggle that. But as you can see, everything is set up and ready to go and prepared to be animated. Uh, so no animations included with the characters, but the characters will work with all your existing Mechanum animations, etc. So that is the end of the Unity portion. So we got the Nature Pack, the War Pack, uh, and a couple of other character models. Now here we are in the Godot game engine. This is a different War Pack. This is for a World War II map environment. And actually, with the way I set it up, I actually think that I like the look of it in Godot the best. Now, you can bring these things into Godot. The nice thing with this entire pack is you're getting it in Unity um, U asset form or U package format. So you literally just import it in as an asset. You can also get it in Unreal Engine 4.x project format. So you literally just go ahead and import them in and you are good to go. Uh, but you also get the source files. So you can easily bring it into an engine like Godot as well. So this is Godot 4 Release Candidate 3, I think it is. The one thing you want to be aware of when you're working working with Godot is you need to add the um, FBX importer in Godot 4. Uh, the instructions are available. It'll tell you when you try to import an FBX, it'll actually throw out a warning to you and tell you you need to import this in. Another thing you're going to want to be aware of 
is you're going to actually want to copy the textures to be in the same location as the FBX file. Um, before you import them in. It's just an important thing to be aware of. Now, the cool thing that you want to know about um, these packs, see how this one building over here is different than all of the other buildings here? So now I'm going to use this one as an example. When it when you're dealing with uh, Cinti assets, they actually come with several texture maps. Okay, I don't know why it selected that asset instead of... Oh, sorry, I got to go and edit this guy. Let's go edit my scene. All right, so here we go. So we're going to go ahead and select this model right here that guy, uh, and you notice the texturing on it. The cool thing that they've done is they've created these uh, multiple texture maps. So what I can actually go ahead and I can pull in one of the different texture maps. So I've got this alt house number two, and what I do is just surface material override right here and literally just drag and drop that guy in and we've changed out the color. So I could go ahead, I'll create another material. So go here, create standard material 3D like so. Uh, and really all you care about is the albedo channel because there's no, um, there's no uh, advanced stuff going on here. There's no normal maps or anything else going on. Uh, and then what we want to do is in the file system over here, we want to find our texture. So again, when you're doing this, make sure that when you have your FBX files, you also copy the texture files into the same folder. They need to do that to work. Just very important thing. But you're going to notice here we have these uh, poly war texture, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are all different color schemes that you can work with. So let's go with four here. We'll drop that onto this channel right here. And we'll go here, save this as uh, material four, like so. Um, and now I can go and so this guy selected, I can do the material override and we just scroll on down here and find material four that we just created. Come on, okay. What a, I think it might be faster to scroll up and then minimize this. Go away, go away. All right, so material four, Literally just drag Material 4 on, and boom, you have a new color. So that's the cool thing with the Cinti stuff, is it's got multiple different uh, layouts going on uh, that you can check out, easily change the environment. Again, you saw there was like 12 or so on different schemes going on. And here you can see it's set up in the Godot game engine. Um, and I think, honestly, I do think of all the renderings, it looks the best in Godot. And I added a light source over here, but... Uh, you can easily use these in the Godot game engine however you wish. And I think they look quite sharp personally. So there is the Godot demo. And now we're going to finish things off with Unreal Engine. Uh, Unreal Engine, the way it works is basically it's a zipped version of the project. You just import it in. All of what we're going to see today is going to run in Unreal Engine 5.1. Uh, this is the Polygon Battle Royale map. So it's more of a modern warfare style thing. Uh, so again, more modern buildings. we got a, a crash transport plane here. Got some modern tanks going on. Again, a very nice and consistent art style here, but everything you see to create this environment is available. And when you're dealing with um, the uh, Unreal Engine versions, you're still getting uh, ready to go um, characters to drop in. So if I want to bring in, I didn't necessarily want to bring a character. Let's bring in a, a bush. So it's very easy to set up and have things going as well. So that is the first one. That, again, was the Battle Royale pack. Uh, this one here is the Western Frontier. So if you're into, like, um, again, more of a Western game. So we've got a fort environment right here. And, again, all of the stuff that you see to create this environment is available and ready to go. And, again, there are multiple different texture maps. We've got a, a mine going on over here. I wonder if you can go into the mine. Yep, yeah, here we go. And we've got some dynamite going on. So everything you need to create a Western style game is available in this pack. Uh, next up, we have the Polygon Dungeon. So this is for creating, obviously, a dungeon environment. And again, the nice thing about Sinti is if you commit to this as your art style, uh, it's relative, I wouldn't say it's easy to recreate, but it's relatively easy to create as opposed to like a realistic style. You can mesh it with other art packs that are out there. And then Sinti literally make a pack for everything. So if you need knights, they'll have a knight pack. If you need dragons, they'll have a dragon pack. If you need, um, I can't really even think of anything, orcs, they'll have an orc pack. It's, it's amazing just how much content they have created over the years. And it all meshes nicely together. So that there is the dungeon environment. Next up, we're getting into their simple side. So these are lower polygon stuff. This one is for, so this is even lower polygon than what we've seen so far. This is for a racing type game. You see here, so we're dealing with 
Uh, if you need to create something for a very constrained mobile device, we're talking very small polycon accounts here. Everything you need to create a racing style game, a number of different vehicles. You've got some motorcycles going on. So again, you can see that motorcycle, they, they represent shape well with low polygons, but that's probably like 80 polygon kind of object here. And then over here, we've got some uh, track set up here. So if you want to do like a stunt racers type setting, you have all of the stuff you need for that. And then we also have um, an oval for the uh, the NASCAR fans amongst us and some oval style stuff, including uh, a status board or a timing board. Uh, so this is the lowest polygon style that they've got. Another super low polygon, this is Simple Fantasy. Again, it's kind of getting a bit more uh, Minecrafty in the look. It's still very pleasing aesthetically, but this is much lower polygon stuff going on here. And there are a number of like these low polygon stuff in the pack. Um, so I figured I would showcase at least a couple of them. And then that is it for the Unreal Engine side of our demonstration. So all we have left now is a Blender. And in Blender, I imported the same scene that we saw in um, the Godot game engine, that uh, World War II war environment pack. Uh, now, one thing you're going to find is aesthetically, everything looks a little weird initially. So let's fly around the world. And I'll show you how to go out and fix that. So there's nothing really special inquire, required to bring these things in. You literally just... Um, just do it. Uh, it, it. They just import in as FBX. Uh, in the past, they had, had some of their stuff was troublesome to implement or to bring it in because it was FBX ASCII. Uh, but I didn't find a single thing in this pack that was actually uh, FBX ASCII. So um, what, again, I will point out, you're probably noticing things are looking a little, well, first off, they're dark. That's easily fixed. You could either just uh, jack up the environment's lighting a bit or you're gonna add a sunlight to the world. But the, the things don't look that great for some reason. It's like these trees, they look they look muddy. Everything else here looks muddy. Okay, I didn't mean to zoom out that much. But the reason for that is quite simple. It's the default shading uh, when you're dealing with Blender. So what you wanna do to fix that is basically you select, well, you can do it, or you can select literally every object in the world. Um, but I'll just do it, pick one. So grab an object like so, just right click it, and shade flat then it looks right shade flat right click it shade flat so let's go take a look at that house compared to its neighbor so you can see shaded shaded flat so this guy here shade flat here shade flat so that's what you want to do to get that Cinti style back it defaulted to smooth shading and you're just going to want to turn that off by the way you can just basically select every single mesh in in the game kind of thing just like this right click shade flat, and then all of those things will look right. But it's just one of those things to be aware of when you're dealing with uh, Blender, your default shading just doesn't look good with Cinti assets. And it's just switch from smooth shading to flat shading and everything will look good to go once you get the lighting down. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. So we got, um, here it is in Blender, Unreal Engine, the low polygon stuff, super low polygon stuff, the various different packs that are available. Here we got it again in the Godot game engine. And honestly, again, I, I set the lighting up manually on this one. But I think this one looks the best of all of them, to be honest. I just think I think it, it renders the best in the Godot game engine. Um, here we are again in Unity. Uh, things are rigged for animation, but they do not have animations attached. But as you saw from this video, pretty easy to get the animations up and going. And once again, this is the bundle. So only a couple things to be aware of. Again, when you bring them into the Godot game engine, make sure that the textures are in the same directory as the FBX file that you're importing, and then they will import with textures. Otherwise, you have to recreate the textures yourself. As you saw, there are multiple texture sets per thing. So if you want to switch out the style, almost all of these packs, you can do so, which is very cool. When dealing with Blender, make sure that you um, set to flat shading and you're good to go. And then for um, the Unity engine, it's literally for all of these things, you're bringing them in just as assets. So here you go, import package, custom package like so. Uh, and then you bring in the package that you want. And then it's just like in the, you, in the next dialogue will pop up. You say import and you are good to go. Uh, in the world of Unreal Engine, all of these things come down as um, so right here. So Cinti folder for Unreal Engine. They're literally just Unreal Engine projects. And then what you want to do is just load the project. Uh, and if you haven't loaded it already, so the these are Unreal Engine 4, you just come in and say, okay, I want you to load this in whichever version you want, and then you are good to go. So that's all that was involved in getting the Unreal Engine stuff up and running. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the best of Polygon Game Dev Assets pack. We saw Nature, War, uh, not sure if I showed that one or not, this one here, these two right there. 
uh, the hearse, and so on. So we saw a lot of what's actually included in this pack, the Battle Royale kit down here, the dungeon pack. So you saw well over half of what's in this pack. There's still, again, a lot of the low polygon stuff that I didn't really cover much. You got an idea of what it is because I did show you, again, that racetrack and so on. Uh, so about half of them are the super low polygon style. Half of them are the low polygon style. Uh, it's up to you which one you prefer. Uh, the, these, there's enough difference between them. You're probably not going to want to mix and match. But for like $25 USD, this is just a staggeringly good deal. Uh, and yeah, uh, by the way, when you do buy it, you do have the option of uh, sending some money GFS's way. And if you do that, I very much appreciate it. So that is a more in-depth, hands-on look with the Polygon Game Dev Assets and how to use it in all three major engines as well as Blender. Hopefully you guys found that useful. If you have any additional questions, if I like, glossed over something or if you have trouble importing these things, uh, do let me know and I will try my best to cover it. And that's it. Uh, so that is the best of Polygon Game Dev Assets by Cinti Bundle. Hands-on. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.